Hey everybody, Edo here, and this is Cape May. Now, the good folks at Thunderworks Games sent me along a copy, Thunderworks Games, and it should be known that Keith Mateka is a good friend of mine who runs Thunderworks Games. He's worked on Pencil First Games games like Skull Hollow, but even Silver Modes and a number of our other titles like Herbaceous, and um, even Stephen Kerr, the graphic designer, has done graphic design work for us as well. So, um, they're friends. I was super curious about this one, though, for a number of reasons. One, right, this has nothing to do with their roleplay or empire. Uh, this is a, a totally original game, IP, that's based on Cape May, this place in uh, New Jersey, which I wasn't familiar with, but apparently a lot of people go uh, vacation there and do that sort of thing. It seems like it's a reasonably famous place. Um, but even growing up on the East Coast, it sounds sort of like a Martha's Vineyard type of a spot. And, um, but not only was it not role player, it also went direct to retail. Now, the uh, cartographers went to direct to retail, but that had the whole role player thing behind it. So I'm very curious how this product's going to do, and also why, you know, what game Keith would dive in with to try it. So, Cave May is, so we're, it's, it's a very thematic game, gorgeous, very subtle design and visual layout, very muted, but in a, like, in a really nice way. Except for these are obviously not muted, but these are, uh, these are bright. Um, bursting with stuff, I don't have it all out here, but there's stuff, like, uncomfortably full, honestly. Like, the box, you really gotta, like, just shove everything. There's no insert anything, just, like, get it all in there. Um, really to the rim, you have to, like, think about putting it back together. Um, so it's a heavy box. Um, but so, in this game, which is thematic, it, it's all about this place, there are these event cards that really, like, resonate with the, the, the time period that this was set, where you're building out Cape May. Um, and so, this game is like an interesting, sort of, almost, it's not a roll and move. It uses cards, and you're deciding what to do, like uh, Concordia, where you have a hand of cards, you're playing your movement cards, and then you get to pick them back up into your hand and use them to go again, um, as, you're, as you're moving around on the board. And, but you're also building properties and, and growing out the space. So it's, 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 it's got this very Euro point salad, build out your world, you know, your, your city vibe to it. It's super mellow, um, which was surprising. Uh, everyone's working in their own areas. There's some competitive spaces, but you have bonus cards that are pushing your own way. So it comes off as this nice meander of a game. Um, so specifically, what are we doing here? Well, we're all going to have our little, uh, characters. They all start in this corner. We're all going to have our own deck of cards, or deck of cards, hand of cards. And these are our movement cards. And then we'll have a number of tiles we can place for our, our buildings and our, our, how, our homes and our shops, which we'll put on the board in spaces that are the same size as them, whether they're squares for shops or square, sorry, hexagons for shops, squares for homes. And then as we play, we're going to upgrade those homes to nicer ones. And there's this general sense of um, stuff that uh, is cheaper the further away from the beach you are. And as you work towards the beach, it's more expensive. Um, so there is a lot of money in this game. You're going to be moving. You're going to be spending money to build buildings. They cost money to build. Each one is more expensive based on where you are. And then... The, the type of building it is gives you an income, and you're going to have an income phase where you're going to earn that money back, and you're going to spend that money to upgrade your building. So it's all about building and earning money and building and earning money and building and earning money. Um, and so your movement cards, as I said, really, like, pick a number. You have different movement cards. Some of them cost money to use, but you're basically going to be like, all right, I'm going to play the five, and you go one, two, three, four, five, and then you can build in that spot. So you're really, like, navigating this board. There are a number of other cards which I'll we'll talk about, but really, again, you're 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 moving to a place to build a building, and then you're upgrading a lot of buildings, and again, uh, you're going to play over a total of twelve months, and each month it'll have an event, and every three months you get income, sort of how you earn money until you go all the way around. Events give bonuses. They create fire areas. Lots of interesting, the very cool events that sort of are thematic and of the space. But so you're going to have your your normal building cards. There are these activity cards, which act as like super building, uh, super movement cards. You can get like a cheap upgrade or like a move 20, not 20, make a move nine spaces or a discount. So like 
Um, you're going to start with a couple of these, and as you play, you can earn more. And uh, and then each player is also going to have some bonus cards, which are essentially end of game victory point uh, victory cards worth a lot of points. Um, these smaller cards are when you upgrade a building, you have your ability to get a little nice little bonus. Uh, some of them are passive, some of them are ongoing. And then as you walk around, there are little spots on the board, a little hard to see, but there's bird watching ones. And then there's this bag of bird bird tiles, which is a set collection game. And you're going to collect birds and you're going to just make sets. That part of it is just making sets. And I guess Kate May must have bird watching. Uh, you can get to the pier, which gives you more activity cards because activities at the pier, or you can go to the lighthouse, which lets you upgrade something for free anywhere else. There are movement arrows on the board that are like making you move around in different directions as you're sort of building up this space. Um, at the end of the game, you're gonna get points for each building. You, you've upgraded, your, your Victorians you've upgraded. You can then like make them landmarks and put them on these white things to make them worth even more victory points at the end of the game. And then there's majorities and bonuses. It's a big board. As you meander around, um, the like player to player competitions, it's there, but really sort of everyone's rolling their own way. And then the, um, the bonus cards are, 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 unless they conflict with each other, really have players sort of, oh, I really want something, I, I need to focus on at least two Victorians and landmarks in both gravel and dirt. So I'm gonna be working gravel and dirt, or dirt, or I mean, I could just read another one. I uh, have at least two groups of three or more adjacent buildings or, you know, diagonally adjacent. So these are worth so much points that you, you, you can't ignore them. You have to do them and that will split up the players. So um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of econ economy. I enjoy it. I was surprised at how passive it was, but also sort of gritty in terms of the, the economy, like the amount of like, hey, I gotta buy this, pay this, buy this, pay this, earn my income, buy, pay it, like money. Like, like um, it's very crunchy like very almost gravelly, for lack of a better term. Um, but it sits in a nice place. It sits in a nice place, and which makes it interesting to like, like Keith was like, it's not the kind of game I would normally think Keith would gravitate, uh, uh, gravitate towards. And this wasn't designed by Keith, this was designed by Eric Moso, um, so. And, you know, you find yourself min-maxing, working up and building up, and as we play, this whole thing's gonna get built up, and, 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 and really it's thematic to the space. I think in some ways, it will resonate most with people who who know this this community. Um, and um, I, I, I found it enjoyable. It's not, you're not getting gigantic combos. You can use your activity cards to sort of move forward, and you, it, but like, it's, it's that thing where the combo is like, you got a big discount. <laughs> like a big move means you like got something a dollar cheaper and you got to keep that money. There's more to it than that. But it, it, just, it just sits in an interesting place. I like all the mechanics. It works together. Um, a quibble is while the buildings are, you know, like super clear, um, albeit, I mean, if you're colorblind, you could still have an issue, uh, but the colors they chose for the individual buildings are really distinct. These like, Building tiles that have the colors, you're not gonna even be able to see it, are terrible. Sorry, I, I, I found that the color on these on the tiles when you're laying them all out between the different players is like, I'm very I'm color sensitive and um, it's just too subtle. Uh, there's a lot in this game, the little bird icons on the board that are super subtle and it lends to an, the aesthetic, which I really like, but that experience, especially before you get to the big buildings, when you're still just dealing with the squares and the, and the hexagon flats, you know, I I, I find it. I, I I don't think it was. I, I think something more would should have been done to bring that to life. That that was a quibble, and it sort of stuck with me the whole way through. I love Concordia play, where you're picking up cards as you like. So Concordia means uh, there's an example. As I have a hand, I'm playing to the table. Uh, Century Spice Road is another example, but I can't use these cards until I. Use an action to pick them back up. On your turn, you do have a lot of actions. You can like play. You can earn some money. You can like use activity cards. Like, you know, lots of lots of different things you can do at any given moment, earning money and spending it. Um, I like this. I, I like it. I, again, it, it it's mellow. It's it's a big mellow game, 
which is interesting. It's an interesting, interesting game to develop and design. So anyway, this is Cape May. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.